So yeah, we start off another episode of the Patriotarchy Podcast. Uh, and then, of course, you know, I'm going to shout out to Gimme a Jimmy's Beer. Uh, the unofficial Thort from the Warp Warhammer 40k Stories channel. And then, of course, as always, check out my, uh, my Spotify music channel, if you could, please. Other than that, that's all the plugs I got. Uh, this is the podcast where I'm going to dub this one Delusion Evaporation, or, well, Delusion Egotism, which in a lot of ways leads to that evaporation and incompetency. And that acronym, as some of you may, may have seen, might point out to something or point to something, as with previous topics where I have touched on uh, humanism, modernism, as it relates to humanism. This ties right into that. Um, with that delusional portion of it being the first part, the delusion for this quota, this quota not based on qualifications or content of character, this quota based on just hitting these statuses, these very uh, fa these false um, elevations of virtue. Uh, it's just like with the um, with the kuf jab. It's just like with these certain things where people will have this mob mentality, which in a lot of ways is the exact thing Socrates warned against when it came to these people preaching supposed democracy. Right into a very humanistic interpretation of what somebody as uh, like a philosopher like Socrates warned against, and just as many as the founding fathers of the United States warned against, just as many as some of the, and I know this is going to be a controversial statement, but it's just as many as some of the um, uh, or the, uh, the French uh, liberals um, and then the and post enlightenment, um, and then the German idealists all had some sense of, well, you know, the universe and or its consequences and or the things that intended it to be is unordered. So there must have to be an order, um, whether it be a minority or a majority order. Well, that's really for us <laughs> as far as conspiracy theorists on the right to figure out, right? Um, but, uh, when it comes to that in all seriousness, boots on the ground mentality, this delusion is something that has caught the best of people and it has caught the best of people who want to make honest livings, people who want to do things honestly. And the problem with this is, is that that delusion for whatever capacity it might be, once you cross that line, well, it's a line that probably has, you know, can be habitually crossed by that sense because we don't govern ourselves with our better angels. Um, and however, that leads into this inequity. It doesn't, it doesn't lead to equity. It doesn't lead to equality. It doesn't lead to this false sense of, well, you know, we need to do things to help these certain groups of people try to maintain and and get better well if you look at bell curves and then if you look at socioeconomic statuses this is in fact and indeed the opposite now is this in lieu of something that should be based on somebody's skin color no is it due to a perpetuated culture of viciousness i would say that would probably be more so of the case because so you know he who rejects the world will, you know, embrace the spirit of Christ, right? Or the, the Lord. So, I mean, that's just, it's just, it's as simple as that. And I know, like, this is obviously a pro heavy Orthodox Christian channel. And I'm speaking from that. And I'm not only speaking from that, but I'm speaking from experience because people from all walks of life, whether they be Asian, Cuban, Indian, European, South African. <laughs> uh, and that's not that's not a plug for Elon Musk, but you probably get the uh, 
probably get the uh, the tie over that I'm trying to make there. Um, or Afrikaner, really. Uh, see, the thing is, is that that's interesting because it's like all those walks of life. And once your heart and mind has changed, well, that's just it. They think they're winning the hearts and minds, but there's there's that deceit there. There's that delusion. There's that need or that or that synthesis for what they think is a just cause. Well, mind you, it is not. Because as I have pointed out in the previous podcasts, with especially with the humanism one, there is no utopia, right? And as poignantly as Father Sarah from Rose always has put it, especially with um, the current book I'm uploading to the channel as well, the nihilism, um, root of the revolution of the new age, he definitely always puts it not only very poignantly, but he always has a sense of um, direction. And that sense of direction is not rooted in just some kind of abstract, you know, theology or philosophy that people might want to, <clears throat> you know, it, it uh, you know, get, get, get all condu you know, conducive or get all, get all kinds of, um, uncomfortable with it because if they're going to really push this rainbow flag and nonsense down our throats, well, the problem is, is that when you start pushing that is because that's not rooted in anything true. That's rooted in humanism nihilism is where it all leads to because we're seeing that as you know as far as that goes on a um on a church governance scale you know we're seeing that with the heterodox versions of the faith we're seeing that with the pseudo religions of the world not turn to the truth the eternal logos in christ so with that being said it's that when these when these companies go to push this cringe and go to push this nonsense on to people and decide to part ways with them. There's people who have, and I have seen it on LinkedIn, and I have seen it in the ether on, on Facebook, and I have seen it all across the board, Telegram, you name it. The, the, the problem is just with, you know, men and women on Telegram who want to take those pseudonyms, they're obviously people that more than I, more, more than likely will agree with, um, in a lot of ways, we don't always have to see eye to eye, but it's the, it's that, um, agreeance and that adherence to it. So here's, here's the thing. And I'm going to go back to this and this is in the prologue atheism. Eugene wrote in later years, true ex ex existential atheism, burning with hatred of seemingly unjust or unmerciful God is a spiritual state it is a real attempt to grapple with the true God whose ways are so inexplicable, even to the most believing of men. And it has more than once been known to end in blinding vision of him whom the real atheist truly seeks. It is Christ who works in these souls. The Antichrist is not to be found primarily in the great deniers, but in the small affirmers, whose Christ is only on the lips. Nietzsche, in calling himself Antichrist, proved thereby his intense hunger for Christ. So it's these people, once again, this, these stones will shout, right? So it's these people crying out. I mean, look at just St. Mary of Egypt being a one of the most primary examples of this. You know, le left, led a life of absolute despair, le led a life of absolute, um, you know, lost, as, as spiritually lost as you can be in, the mo in, in a carnal sense. And then all it took was that moment of repentance, that moment of turning turning that metanoia right and that's that's a beautiful thing right so when you see these people embrace this there there is there is a deep spiritual pain and agony that goes along with it but where they're suffering and where they're slaving to is not towards they're not working towards anything that's rooted in truth so this there's there's a delusion there's what a lot of podcasters out there would probably say on my side of the fence would call it pre-list right so, I mean, there's, there's this thing where you also have this other quote that comes to mind, or this other excerpt, I should say. So, only a few years before this, Eugene himself had been ensnared in the kingdom of man. 
and he suffered in it. He too had been at war against God. Having rejected the Protestant Christianity of his formative years as being weak and ineffectual, he had taken part in the Bohemian counterculture of the 1950s and had delved into Eastern religions and philosophies, which taught that God is ultimately impersonal. Like the absurdist artists and writers of his day, he had experimented with insanity, breaking down logical thought processes as a way of breaking on over to the other side. He read the words of the mad prophet of nihilism, Friedrich Nietzsche, until those words resonated in his soul with an electric infernal power. Through all these means, he was seeking to attain truth or reality with his mind, but they resulted in failure. He was reduced to such a state of despair that when later asked to describe it, he could only say, I was in hell. He would get drunk and would grapple with God, whom he had claimed was dead, pounding on the floor and screaming him to leave him alone. Once while intoxicated, he wrote, I am sick, as all men are sick who are absent from the love of God. And see, that's the point. The point is, is that making a passing comment, trying to do the right thing, trying to work hard for something, and then getting nowhere with it, while, while these other pe people, or while these other, I should say, protected classes of people get the special treatment, right? As I've seen it with some coworkers who practice different religions, get different days off. As I see with other coworkers who want to force things that are not of European descent onto us. And the issue with that is, is that with this delusion leads to denial of the truth. And with these cultures and countercultures of all shapes, forms, and sizes, right? Um, and I could even, I could even make this tie into, you know, I guess a, a counterculture in a way of its own. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call orthodoxy necessarily a counterculture to this current culture, but I mean, I guess, I guess in the way of a secular or a human, a secular humanist, um, somebody who, who preaches all this left-wing fascism, uh, you could definitely break that down for them and that's calling that's calling the um the, the pot calling the kettle black because when you when you reject things like this and when you reject this spiritual delusion and this vast difference of it well you even see it in something of of father father rose rejecting the protestant christianity of his formative years as being weak and ineffectual people respond to that people know that like that delusion is there that delusion is so prevalent that people will go to say they were in hell. And they're literally battling like hell to get out of it. But see, that's just it. It's that turn to that nihilism. It's that turn to that there is no resonation in your soul. There is no, there is no striving for it. And as an Orthodox Christian, I did delve in the martial arts for a while. I did delve in both Western and Eastern philosophies, but I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it in polemics. I couldn't find it in anything else but Orthodox Christianity, but turning to the Church Fathers, but turning to the saints, but turning to those that in outright ways reject something like this, not the, the, the acronym that's, po that's posed here. The, uh, you know, I mean, many of the prophecies that, even Saint Paisos proclaimed, or 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 um, nodded to, such as the unfortunate um, the unfortunate goof jab, right? And then you had that uh, tennis player. For, I, his name escapes me at the moment, but he was even rejected. He's an Orthodox Christian, Serbian Orthodox Christian. Um, Jagovic, no, something like that. Anyway, regardless. I mean, it's just when, when, when real life examples point themselves out like that and when things like that are very much so on that, on that front where it leads to this sick, humanistic, into that nihilism, into that pre-list, well, Nietzsche's words are in a lot of ways prophetic, you know. They're maddening. Obviously, they're maddening to people who think in this order, in this logical process, but breaking it down, while 
you know, this book does point a lot out. Um, these these two things have jumped out to me to tie this into this very much this delusion. Because when you're like running a candle company or you're making or you're or or you're trying to run like an office or things like that and trying to find, you know, the best possible people, in a lot of ways, sure, like you can you can have your your quota hires, I guess, or whatever kind of nonsense you want to put on. But when you're like building planes, bridges, uh, things that people are going to depend on on a daily basis, you want the most competent people working on it. And does that have anything to do with people's skin tones? No, that shouldn't. It shouldn't at all. It shouldn't even be a factor. See, what they even need to do with a lot of this nonsense is they need to reverse it. They need to reverse it because this is not based on even the, even the things the communist Martin Luther King said, Martin Luther King Jr. said. Even, even in his own words, the content of their character. Well, if, the, if people are being judged by the content of their character, they're she, they sure as hell are doing a very good job to turn themselves towards hell and not the truth. Because the more they want to embrace the, the whatever the status quo is proclaiming, and this is why the current thing phenomenon is what it is. This is why it's it's a meme. This is why it's something that has been put into this mimetic or this mimesis mindset. Because there is a gnosis to that. There is a dialectical right right from and this goes this goes all the way back to what I would equate to um Job and the pillar of salt, right? And and him turning to his wife and his wife t- turning into a pillar of salt. For Job was a righteous man, a man who lived by God's law without being fer- a Pharisee about it or pharisical, pharisical about it. He was more so in the context of asceticism, more, to, more so in the context of pointing his... Um, his very much his own, his own sacrifice, his own salvific uh, way towards it to not only serve God but serve his family, right? So, with that being said, as there's a lot of people who are just fed up with that, right? There are a lot of people who don't want this beaten over their heads, and that's delusion. That's prelist. That's that's where this is all coming from. This is where this all stemming from. And as I pointed out earlier, I I, I am pointing out with with the biggest heavy hitter of the German idealist and Friedrich Nietzsche. Um, and this ties into, obviously, the books posted on the channel. But yeah, I mean, that goes right into that goes right into the egotism. And the egotism is just is just, you know, is just another form of this delusion. Because if you're going to write out reject God, write out reject Christ, you are going to go down a path of madness. You are going to go down a path of egotism. It's going to be so poignantly obvious to somebody who is, well, spiritually attuned and somebody who is, uh, in a lot of ways, well, very much so, you know, cognizant of what's going on, you know, and feeling out the, this, this modern age. And when you can't, when when you do when you do things effectively, and when you do things too effectively, but you're pointing it out to others that, you know, they're trying, you're trying to just help others without, you know, giving up your own ego, or with that, or without. I'm sorry, what I meant to say, without giving up your own, you know, mission, or you know, accomplishments. Well, their egotism gets in the way. Their egotism always tends to get in the way. So, the what the what the um, what what it what it, what it comes down to is that in this room, Eugene undertook to write a monumental chronicle of modern man's war against God, man's attempt to destroy the old order and raise up a new one without Christ, to deny the existence of the kingdom of God and raise up his own earthly utopia in its stead. His projected work was entitled The Kingdom of Man and the Kingdom of God. So this came from, obviously, the, 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 that, um, 
That quote came from nihilism, again, the root of the revolution of the modern age. Um, but with that being said, yeah, it's right there. Man's attempt to destroy the old water and raise up the new one without Christ, to deny the existence of the kingdom of God, and to raise up his own earthly utopia in its stead. I mean, you you just you can't you can't accomplish that without being without being um, effective, right? You you can't you just like you won't be effective at it. You won't be you won't be um, poignant. And I mean, this is just this is just something right here. It is it is something on a personal basis. Speaking of egotism, right? I'm used to going against the grain in this new and much less than desirable age. Knew it was eventually going to move. I knew I was eventually going to move on because of the constant shifting and very miscommunicated expectations, and the input of which whichever whichever way you want to to splice that when it comes to calling them leaders. That would that would be a strong word of a very discredited. Um, <laughs> it's an antithesis, actually. But anyway. Constructive with periods of radio silence. I uh, wanted to develop this into something. But a company that glorifies a very backwards path and that of sin is doomed to repeat something that I know and we probably all know too well out there. Deception. Deception is the name of the game. Like, that's just it. When it comes to everywhere you turn and, and, and wanting to make these things better or you know, or look on, look on division or look on any kind of, any kind of, um, really, really, well, really any kind of constructive, um, momentum. It's not there. It's just, it's not there. It's, it's so disingenuous that with that egotism, you can feel it. You can literally feel it. You're like, once again, the stones will shout, your spirit will cry out. Um, so, so with that being said, it's 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 when it came to this, right? It was in such a condition of intense hunger that Eugene found himself in the late 1950s, and then, like a sudden gust of wind, there entered into his life a reality that he never could have foreseen. Towards the end of his life, he recalled this moment. For years in my studies, I was satisfied with being above all traditions, but somehow faithful to them. When I visited an Orthodox church, it was only in order to view another tradition. However, when I entered the Orthodox Church for the first time, a Russian church in San Francisco, something happened to me that I had not experienced in any Buddhist or other Eastern temple. Something in my heart said that this was home, that all my search was over. I didn't really know what this meant because the service was quite strange to me and in a foreign language. I began to attend Orthodox services more frequently, gradually learning its language and customs. With my exposure to orthodoxy and to orthodox people, a new idea began to enter my awareness. That truth was not just an abstract idea. Sought and known by the mind, but was something personal, even a person. Sought and loved by the heart. And that is how I met Christ. So with that testimony, which is a very poignant one, and somebody who has been a underlying prevalent figure to this channel and this podcast... Um, yeah, see how he just throws that ego out the door because with the emptiness of those Eastern religions, with that emptiness of an Eastern, Eastern Gnosticism or, or the, um, you know, the empty, just for emptiness's sake, things found in very Eastern traditions, or you have this enlightenment garbage and this post enlightenment garbage, this humanistic garbage garble up and spit out just complete and absolute nonsense when it comes to this acronym um this egotism just it's it's in it's in the completely different direction where 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 it's funny because all these people who want to identify as these things and these have these special badges whether it be on frankly the right or the left it really doesn't matter because by this point it's a polemical joke um that is funny because it's like pe people want to have this tendency to have this uniqueness, but yet in this uniqueness, it's a it's it's a factory that produces people who are the same, 
which which is a very intense and odd phenomena. But when you have these elevate these elevated false levels of virtue poignantly point poignantly out there. I mean that's it's a joke. It's a joke. I mean you're 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 thinking your ego is so important, so above everybody else's that you want to be treated so specially in this niche kind of way or or niche, 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 I don't know. This segmented, intersectionalized uh, buffoonery, and I'm and I'm and I'm very much mincing my words on some of this. Uh, <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke, and 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 the, and, the, and the sad part is, it's a joke you're playing on yourself, because that abstract idea, sought and known by the mind, but was something very personal, even a person. Sought and loved by the heart. There it is. He, he even noticed the tripartite understanding. His noose was awakened. Hmm. Hmm. And when it's dull, when 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 it's dull, and your noetic eye is disconnected or away from God, somebody who is very much aware of it will know. They'll just know. They'll just have an understanding of it. And that's and that to that egotism, because there's a thing with there is the good part of those Eastern practices, those far Eastern practices, where they do go very much in the direction of that selflessness. But it's is but it's in the direction of that selflessness to where you are serving and in a lot of ways it's that selflessness for selfishness's sake. Whereas, you know, you have the decadence of like the papacy. And then you have the absolute asceticism and imbalance with the Athenite monks, right? Or the monastics and the ascetics of the Orthodox Church. So with that being said, with somebody who is also caught in the middle myself as a man of the West, but also having to have those roots entrenched in a church that is pretty much the only pro-mankind um or pro-human being, for those that, you know, want to hear the PC version of it, uh, institution left on earth. That I mean, that's it. That, that's it. Like, this this spiritual asceticism and this spiritual practice and having and having a, a connection to it is not just by heritage. You know, it's not just by um, what, you, what you might perceive as Russian, Greek, uh, Macedonian, Antiochian, Arabic. Uh, it's something that is obviously more. It's something that is obviously so much more that even the Catholics want a piece of it because they have Catholic Byzantine churches. <laughs> so so even, even the Catholics want the Eastern Rite, right? And, you know, with, with that being said, that egotism, you see it in Protestantism. I mean, you see it w with your pastors. You see it with your um, with those that are preaching the gospel. But their dispensationalist nonsense is just as effective as the acronym that's named here. And in a way, it very much ties into it. Because it's no wonder, it's no wonder why these interpretations can go so sideways and so backwards that with this egotism... It becomes its own monster, and it's so poignant in the Psalms. It's so poignant in 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 what the psalmist said, right? And it's just it's going to lead into this this dulling of of the noetic eye, this dulling of what what people might perceive as uh, a sense of what they might know. They don't know. They have they have no idea. It's so antithetical. Two, what is, you know, what, oh, well, the Far East, I'm going to find my Zen, I'm going to find my center, okay? But how do you do that without direction? How do you do that without spiritual guidance? How do you do that without a Logos? You can't. You literally cannot do it without reason. Because when there is no reason just to exist, and you're just, you're just reincarnating yourself, no, that, that, that doesn't happen, because you can't come back 
as somebody who waves the pride flag and then hopefully come back as like a horse because, oh, well, you know, I might have been carnal and bad in this life. Well, you know, well, I guess I get to try again in like the next three, right? <laughs> well, it might, might be the case, but it's definitely not. I mean, it's definitely not for all the testimonies that are out there that are just not of that, you know, of that essence, right? However, this leads to the last one, the incompetency. And I mean, the first two are versions of and can be synthesized version of that of this incompetency. Um, but... This ties into this ties into this. While working on the kingdom of man and the kingdom of God in his basement apartment, Eugene was still coming to grips with what he had found. He had come upon the truth, and in the undistorted image of Christ, as preserved in the Eastern Orthodox Church. But he yearned to enter into what he called the heart of hearts of that church. It's mystical dimension, not its boring, worldly organizational aspect. He wanted God, and he wanted him passionately. His writings from this time were a kind of catharsis for him. A means of emerging out of untruth, out of the underground darkness and into the light. Although they are philosophical in tone, much more so than his, than his later works, these earlier writings were born in intense suffering that was still very fresh in his soul. It was only natural that he would write much more about the kingdom of man, in which he had suffered all his life than about the kingdom of God, of which he had as yet only caught a glimpse. It was still, though, the prism of the kingdom of man that he viewed that, oh, it was still through the prism of the kingdom of man that he viewed, viewed the kingdom of God. So you see this incompetency through this egotism. We cannot synthesize God. We cannot synthesize the magnitude. We cannot synthesize eternity, right? Because it is, as it has been poignantly pointed out with our own incompetence, with our own misunderstanding and misinterpretation of both the scriptures without the church, without um, the Holy Fathers, without the traditions, without the sacraments, take this incompetency to, well, you do have a organization full of people running well. Well, why is it running well? Well, you know, there's too many white people at the top. What does that have to do with a lick of sense? What does that have to do with anything? Does that does does your race just automatically qualify you for an executive position or to become an engineer that can work on a plane that that has to go into the air or to build a bridge or to construct something that might that will serve people? No, that does that has nothing to do with it. Do your qualifications meet it? Does your overall life experience meet it? Does your your matter in what you, I know and I know people love to use this phrase in, in all this very new age nonsense, which is just which is just occult occultic or Buddhist in all senses. And I, I mean you know, I do I do have I, I do have respect for people who are actually adherence to, you know, like something like Buddhism, because at least they're trying to take an ascetic path. At least they're trying to at least go more towards the truth. I know they're doing it without Christ, but I give them credit where credit's due. At least, at least they're trying to do it. And in, in a lot of ways it can be selfish because, you know, it turns into, well, you know, this is not, this is my truth. No, it's not the truth. And a lot of people have a hard time swallowing that. A lot of people in our in the, this liberalistic age has has a hard time has a hard time pointing that out. But like so much of this book was influenced by Dugan's uh, fourth political theory, right? But where was I going? Oh, we cannot we cannot understand eternity in 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 infinium or infinity is a different understanding is a different thing. Than eternity. Eternity is something that we cannot we cannot match because Christ, the Trinity is outside of time. So that's eternity. That's literally eternity. Um, 
and we 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 cannot understand that. Um, and as as magnified as that is, as magnified as the presence as that is, obviously glory to God. But we know we know that there is something that we need to come to grips with that in the words that are written down in the scriptures, right? And yes, I mean, you can, you like, there's that, there's athe, there's atheistic rhetoric, and then there's, there's just the flat out, um, I guess, I guess you could say temper tantruming of people who can't, who, who just can't understand it, who can't come to grips with it, right? Because of this eternal aspect. Infinity is just a loop. Infinity is just, you know, something something we might do next time to change it up for the next time we might be able to accomplish something, right? But when it's preserved in something as um, as important as the Eastern Orthodox Church, when the East and West do meet with those philosophical tones, with those underlying tones to to get to the truth and the an undistorted image of Christ, right, becomes something more. It becomes what we call revealed theology. And with this incompetence, it has been revealed to us. Nobody wants to call the elephant out in the room, the white elephant out in the room, but that's just it. Like, that's just it. Like, it's 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 so obviously poignant that People who are like, well, oh, you know, we're, we're an all-woman squad, but we're made up of uh, whatever. Like, people who don't believe in Christ, people who do, uh, you know, what, whatever. Whatever kind of nonsense. Well, you know, we can put it together. Well, are you are you just as efficient as those Rosie the Riveters to fly those B-52 bombers? Are you, are you, are you just doing it for a status? Because those ladies, those, those, those Rosie the Riveters, those ladies work there the hinds off and it was just as much they were just as much competent because there was a different level of understanding they knew what they had to do there was a sense of purpose there was a sense of drive now you're just being hired just based on what you look like ridiculous absolutely ridiculous and that's completely antithetical that is a catharsis to what companies should be doing and i understand that you know greed money and power can get all very much wrapped up and involved in this. But I'm just working, I'm looking at this as a pure character anomaly. And that's, that's, that's all it really is. Because this incompetence of what we're so used to, like, oh, you know, the classic, well, the uh, milkshake machine is down at McDonald's again. I mean, that has literally become a meme. That has literally become that. Okay, so are we that incompetent of a society? that we don't have anybody on staff that could fix that? Or do we need to call somebody specially in? Or do we need to, somebody to do this on a specialty basis? Well, you know, we just hired, um, you know, Jamal. But, you know, he has some, like, you know, some maintenance experience. Well, mind you, there, you know, he, he's, what, what, what was he hired for? Well, we, ha we had to hire him over Johnny. Okay, well, what did Johnny used to do? Well, you know, he used to work on machines. You know, he, he used to work on these kind of things. You know, he, he had a ton of experience in it. So why did we hire J Jamal over Johnny when, when obviously one has more experience than the other? And mind you, this, this situation could be flip-flopped, right? But you just, you're just, and by the names I'm using, you can guess what descent both of these gentlemen are. These fictional characters, right? Because people obviously have, have issues with with things like that. But the situation could be flip-flopped, right? Could be any way, shape, and form. Why would you hire the less qualified person and you're just basing it off of something? Well, we wanted to give him an opportunity because his socioeconomic status isn't as good as Johnny's. How do you know that? How do you how how could you possibly even conceive that? Like, see, that's the thing, where it's just like to me, it gets to this point to where this incompetency just breeds more incompetency. And people were so upset with things like the affirmative action thing being dismantled by the Supreme Court. Well, good. Good. Because I would take an Indian 
or African American doctor that made it without affirmative action, just as much as a white doctor. Good, good. I'm, I'm glad it happened because people get there on merit, not on some inconsistent, incompetent catharsis that is absolutely poignant. And you don't see the forest for the trees. You don't see your whole false empire dwindling, right? And that's not in the heart of hearts of people. That's, 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 that's so disingenuous. When you can come out and say, well, you know, this is, this is the way things got to be. No, this is the way things shouldn't be. There should be a cultural shift. There should be a point to where this stuff has to just get so completely out of bounds with its just absolute just um absolute discrepancies and just just <laughs> such just such ridiculousness. It it gets it gets to the point to where this incompetency is it's just it's so it's so ridiculous because they don't they don't have a chance against people that actually like stand in in truth that actually want to um that actually want to have that ambition right that actually want to um be able to get uh get a um get a grip on it right so you know this is this is something that i pulled um at the core of the human spirit lies an insatiable hang hunger for progress whether it be propelled by the pursuit of knowledge personal development or societal advancement this intrinsic quality has been the relentless force behind humanity's most extraordinary achievements grounded in psychological theories evolutionary perspectives and historical exemplars this chapter embarks on an odyssey to unravel the quintessence of the human spirit and its indomitable will to strive for better. So that's just that's just a clip of one of my books, Chapter One: Unraveling the Essence of the Human Spirit. Um, title I will I will link it in the description below. But the problem is is that it's it just gets to the point to where. Obviously, without the evolutionary perspectives. I mean, there is, there isn't, but as far as evolution goes, well, I'll delve into that later in, a, in some later podcasts. But when it comes to when it comes to the psychological theories, you can extract that because psychology is attached to philosophy. Well, philosophy is attached to theology. You can't have one without the other. You can't have the knowledge of God without trying to break it down on a logos basis, right? You, can, you, can, you, just, you just cannot. It's antithetical. However, with that being said, the human spirit, right, is Jamal's, is, is, is Jamal's spirit going to be stronger than Johnny's? Is he going to just learn stuff on the job and be much better, more suited, obviously more ethical and hardworking than Johnny? How would you know that? How would you determine that? Or is Johnny going to turn around and be a be somebody who is or has plenty of experience, but you know is on his last dime and needs that job? Same thing with Jamal. You know he could or he, he, either one could come from affluent homes. Who knows? Who knows the situation? You know. But see, that's just it. Where it's like obviously there is this wanton for this kind of individuality, but this individuality gets so wrapped up in getting, getting to the points to where these, these versions of these, of this incompetent get so pointed out. I mean, look at these teachers. I mean, I get it. Like this is, these are just portions of the population, right? I mean, you're damaging young minds with this drag queen story hour nonsense with this, you know, with this BLM nonsense, with all of this stuff to where you're indoctrinating children children now these are not even adults 18 and up who choose to go to college who choose to pay for it children so that's just it where it's like they can't reproduce but they sure as hell can recruit yeah 
No, you can't. Not, not when the spirit of truth, not when the Lord of hosts, when people follow him, people will know. And it's funny because it's like I say those pseudo-religions of the world, which Islam is one of them, uh, and even, even more conservative Jews and Judaism, uh, they notice it. They know it. They can see it. They can see right through it. And they're, they're, they aren't people who, who don't even, who, who are of false religions, right? So they, they even recognize that there's a disdain for this, that there's an obvious problem with these issues and what you're doing to damage youth and then all the way up to building airplanes and those failing. I mean, this is just, this is just to the point to where this incompetence is based on something that is so, so, <laughs> it's, it's vanity. I mean, it's vain. It's, it's something that, oh, well, you know, an HR rep can say, well, I hired this black person so I can feel good about it. That's not the point of hiring people. That's not the point of going through applications. That's not the point of people trying to better themselves. That has no value in character. That has no value in people trying to do things. Like, it's good to see people trying to promote these businesses that are of minority ownership. It's good to see these people want to do th things for the environment. It's These are all, like, good and noble causes. Like, these sure are. But is that going to really get anybody anywhere on, on a false sense of virtue? No. No. It's hard work, dedication, and grinding it out. And putting your nose to the grindstone. Because like I pointed out, I, I, I wouldn't want an affirmative action doctor <laughs> or dentist or somebody who's going to work on an airplane or build a bridge or try to construct a road or a house. I wouldn't, no, no. Give me the uneducated guy who probably barely speaks English, but I know he can probably post a frame up in, you know, a day and a half. Give me, give me, give me that guy who's done it plenty of times and is very competent at his job. I don't care what he looks like. He's a hard worker. He's got character. He's obviously been through the mill. Give me that guy, or or lady, if whichever. But you know, we gotta we gotta recognize the other seventy-two genders here, which is just more nonsense and delusion. It's just it's 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 never ending because. It's a hydra effect, and it gets to this point to where these qualities, these, these, these aspirations, these things to where people think they know, right? And when you don't have this logical reason, when you don't have this aim, this goal, it, gets, it strives away from the truth. It strives away from what we should know, from what we do know in our heart of hearts, like, like I even pointed out, Jews and Muslims even know, like Jews and Muslims even know, like the ones that are actually wholeheartedly conservative and the ones that are, that want to keep their traditions alive and, and their strive for better. And I know I'm pulling, you know, a, a 180 with, with a Duganist kind of mentality with that, which is not what I want. But even that when it would, you know, it's an issue when people who don't even recognize the wholehearted truth you know it's an issue like 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 it's not something that is just going to fade away and i didn't even touch i didn't even touch on that like the incompetency of these teachers they're not teaching they're not teaching writing arithmetic social studies you know how, to, how kids can you know build build a chair balance a checkbook bake a cake you know they're not they're not even they're not even like trying to do that for children anymore and when you get so indoctrinated and so full of your own nonsense you become you become entirely useless to not only yourself but to others and that is incompetence in a nutshell that's incompetence to a to a degree to where you are so useless to yourself you are so useless to others that people don't even want to be around you that's awful that's awful, right? So it so it gets to the point to where I pointed out with the um, with the egotism is that 
your own ego literally takes over. But in a in a Freudian concept, when you have the have the three, which is funny, because that <laughs> uh, speaking of of another German <laughs> that, uh, or Austrian, I'm sorry. Speaking of another Austrian, that uh, well, I guess of you know they do Germany and Austria do shy do do share heritage and do share ties together. So I guess it's not that far off the mark. But in the Freudian concept, when it when it came to the you know id ego super ego, one one's going to take over the other in in some way shape or form and replace you know it's got that replacement kind of kind of value to it. Well, see in 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 Christianity with the tripartite soul, those things are not only working in, you know one one striving for the other, but in in symbiotic union, right? Because we have Christ. Right, and it's funny that the the acronym of of this delusion, egotism, and incompetency are once again three things that are very much tied to, and you could you could literally tie it to the id, ego, super ego. And I'll I'll probably dive into that later when when I get more time um, with that with the with the with this and and wrapping it up. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to point some of this stuff out because this is more along the lines and I haven't done anything as far as this humanist, you know, tying it back to this nonsense is concerned. And going after and, hear, and hearing some of these words again or seeing some of these words again, it's very much in the context of that, right? It's very much in the context of getting getting this getting this acronym out and, and in a lot of ways the 1984... Two minutes hate also comes to mind. A lot of um, a lot of metaphors in Animal Farm because Orwell was a very n- another poignant writer, and one of my favorite rock bands, Muse, makes a lot of references to what it is. But when you can't when you can't even drop a joke, when you can't even have that rapport with your coworkers, when you can't when you can't even strive for anything that is going to be on a basis for a team or for for a group of people that you obviously have your differences but can set all that aside and just put your nose to the grindstone well are those are those racial differences going to really matter are those religious differences i think i think the more you you point to that the more you point it out the more you inflame it the more you inflame those passions the more you make that worse for wear. See, that's just it. That's that's, and and being in in denial of that, and being in denial of your own ego, will will make you seem competent to other people. Will make you not seem deluded. It will it will, it will ground you in reality. It will ground you in pointing to yourself. So deflating that ego that is that has to be there. Should should be a lesson to a lot of people, but but see that's the thing. I know it's not. I, I know it's just not, and that's the thing where people want to get so propped up by this liberalistic nonsense, this enlightenment, post enlightenment, post modern, modern, whatever, whatever. Um, and I could interject and listen to a few back of my podcast, probably pull some stuff out and tie this into the next one. But that's just it. Where it's like. It's not. It's not going to be anything that is poignant. It's not going to be anything that's going to be correct or corrected, or get to the point to where, as Father Rose had his issues with a movement that was essentially the Bohemian, the Beatnik movement, that you know these these liberals of today feel like the same thing. Well, you see it in the hipster culture. Like they all look the same. They all want to be the same thing. They all. They all want to go, oh, well, you know, corporate man, or, you know, oh, any of that nonsense, right? But it's all the same. They're all, they're all, it's all the same thing. It's like they literally came out of a factory, a meme factory. And then, like, you know, you, you see it, well, you know, all the other side's just a bunch of white supremacists. So people exercising their constitutional rights is rooted in supremacy on that, and then teaching, teaching, Children, once again, teaching children basic skills 
like, I don't know, math, for them how to read, <laughs> like, like things that will obviously help them grow and help them turn into much more well-rounded human beings is rooted in white supremacy, is rooted in racism. Because, oh, you know, only white people can be racist, right, in America. Like, it's like, you're literally disservicing children. What? Like, like literally innocent, innocent human beings. Of all aspects. You're literally disservicing and neglecting children. Basic things. Like, children have a want for knowledge. They need knowledge because their bodies and brains are developing. That's not, that's not rooted for your own egotist nonsense. Putting that parts of that plane together is not rooted in your egotist nonsense. It's for you to be at such a high level of understanding something. Something that literally has to be put at a high level, engineered, fabricated into something that comes from raw minerals from the earth into something that is a feat of humanity. And is it a feat of humanity because of God? Well, I sure would hope so. The people that are building that believe in God, believe in Christ. Because that's what's going to strive. That's what that that's what that's what actual progress looks like. You know, people want to say, well, you know, something like orthodoxy isn't rooted in progress. I did, I I continue to deny that. I continue to what is, what is what does progress look like to you? Does it look like the rainbow flag? Because that's the exact opposite. That rainbow flag is not something to be to bow down to. That was a covenant. Once again, a covenant broken. And once again, these people want to rename it, invert it, do whatever they want because they can't. They don't have the grounding. They don't have the understanding because, once again, their delusion is prelested into this 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 um this false sense of virtue it's delusional it's nonsense into their own egos they want to inflame their egos with the passions because well i need to be a special something and have these special badges of false honor well you know i'm this i'm that okay nobody cares can you can you do can you do things competently well, then lies the ego issue. This incompetence goes right into it. This incompetence goes right into the fact that they can't handle it. Well, you know, I got to step away because of my anxiety. Or this person said a comment to me that I don't agree with. Okay. Well, I mean, you can't you can't serve that steak to table 10 then because of, because of that. Or am I going to have to find somebody else? Like, it's just... It's just, it's gotten to the point to where it's like people literally can't function in society without getting to the point to where they, uh, they, be, they become so incompetent in and of, of themselves. It's, 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 it's ridiculous. It's selfish. It's absolutely, it's, it's antithetical to being productive to even the word progress itself, right? And that to me, it's, it's, it's laughable. It's, beca- it's become a comedic show. And that's sad. That's that's it's it's absolutely sad because it's a disservice to children. It's a disservice to people who actually are qualified to do the things they need to do to, to succeed in life. See, that's the other part. Like to succeed or to fail. Like failure and succession are all valuable teachers. And that this insulation for the sake of one's own ego will only make somebody more more incompetent and will only make somebody less adaptable, less likable. It will only make people less, it will only make people more alienated because of these false elevations of virtue. See, that's just it. It's not rooted in truth. It's not rooted in anything that is actual progress, that is actual competency. And to that, I leave you with that because this is obviously... Um, going to hit the mark that I wanted it to, and I hope you enjoyed it again out there, everybody. Uh, and once again, obviously ending, ending with these, God bless you all and getting to, uh, getting to the point to where, 
you know, this, this might be more of a regular thing.